probably has to be replaced with something else because the space-time as a concept uh, leads to some singularities or some regions where the equations fail. Uh, this happens in the interior of the black holes. Uh, when space somehow collapses, you have like a collapse of the universe in the interior of the black hole. Um, and also, most importantly, it happened in the beginning of the Big Bang. So if we extrapolate the equations backwards to the beginning of the universe, at the very, very beginning, the curvature space was so curved that uh, the equations again fail. It's a region where we think that um, we'll have to improve the equations, so we'll have to include the quantum effects. So we use quantum mechanics to describe small things, atoms and so on. And space-time works pretty well for very heavy things like the universe. And along, when we think about gravity, we usually think about long distances, so these quantum effects are very small. However, at the beginning of time, the whole universe was very, very tiny, and these quantum mechanical uh, properties become very important. So we need to improve Einstein's equations and make them consistent with quantum mechanics. And the goal of uh, many researchers, uh, and me included, is to uh, try to find this new set of equations. Um, and we go about this by trying to generalize the, the equations we know in special circumstances and so on to, to get better equations that could describe this, uh, this beginning of time. Uh, that's the central objective. We, we are not there yet. We don't know how to describe this beginning of time. But along the way, we've learned uh, how to describe, for example, black holes as seen from the outside, or how to think about the, the scattering of gravitons at very high energies and things like that. Uh. Quantum entanglement is a kind of correlation that exists between variables. Um, um, so we are used to classical correlations that you could be that. Uh, because of some reason, if you, um, I mean, if you leave your glove at home and you have one in the pocket but you haven't looked yet uh, which one it is, if you find your right glove in the in your pocket, the left glove is at home, right? So that's a classical correlation. But um, quantum correlations are correlations where, in some sense, stronger, and they are stronger because quantum variables um, can can have sort of more states. Uh, so they are called non-commuting states and so on. And in some sense, uh, they carry a little bit more information, more more correlation than the classical variables. And it's something that's a proper, it's a strange property of quantum mechanics um, that makes quantum mechanics really different than classical physics. The very basic property of quantum mechanics. Uh, the, the fact that quantum mechanics has this property was discovered in the 30s by Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen. They, they realized that this was a funny property. And they were disturbed by it. They thought that this meant quantum mechanics is wrong or incomplete and so on. Um, but now I think we've come to accept it, that this is the way quantum mechanics works. Uh, and not only accept it, but use it in the sense that uh, this is a, an important property and, um, and we, we think that it might be useful for building quantum computers and it's useful for understanding complex states of matter and so on. And, and more than that is that uh, in the studies of uh, quantum gravity and holography, we also come to realize that it's important for building the structure of space-time itself. Um, that this, these degrees of freedom that live on the boundary uh, are very entangled uh, with each other, so distant ones are very entangled, and the, out of this entanglement somehow uh, pops out the space-time itself in a way that's not uh, fully understood, but we are, start we're, we are starting to understand. Uh, 